Welcome back to The Producer Podcast. I'm your host, Micah Versman, and today it's all about location, 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 as we sit down with Josh Pittman to discuss the role of the locations manager and what the producer should do to help them secure the best locations possible. So without further ado, let's get started. Thank you, Josh, for coming on the show today. Sure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate appreciate it. So to start, maybe kind of introduce yourself a little bit and then tell us how you got involved doing kind of the locations area of film. By accident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been wanting to be, I've wanted to be in film since 2006 um that's when i got my first digital camera that actually worked and it had the little video feature on it so i did that didn't get on my first feature film until 2018 <clears throat> which was actually counter column okay and ironically enough we were both on that i was just there the week that you weren't there so <laughs> <laughs> so we've been on the same project without knowing it um but yeah, I did. I came on to counter column and I said, Hey, I'll be a PA. I'll, I'll do anything. And, um, uh, first day I got there, they took me aside and said, Hey, Josh, we don't have anybody doing locations at all. And, uh, would that be something you wanted to do? And I said, sure. I have no clue what that is. Just tell me what it is. I'll jump in. And I did, they told me what it was. So that ended up being the best um, best position I could ask for. Being new to a film set, I was able to move around, um, go anywhere I wanted, do all sorts of stuff, work with all the different departments, and really get a good feel for um, what a film set was. So ended up being, I, I never would have picked locations, um, but after doing that one, I was like, hey, I could do this again. So I did that. Um, and uh, that's that's how I've been able to get on the rest of them. So it's been been a pretty fun thing. Nice. Um, I'm curious, since you have been interested in doing film since 2006, were you ever at any of like the SACIF festivals back in the day? So I wasn't. I actually followed those and thought about going, but I was in Florida at the time and it was a very long drive to Texas, mm -hmm. uh, still is today, but it was a very long drive for me back then. <laughs> and uh, so I never made it. And uh, actually the first festival I went to was the uh, CWVFF in 2018, which is hey. where I met Matthew Jordan and where I met Jonathan Schutz and different people. And that's how I got on to counter column. So nice yeah no it's it's pretty crazy how helpful festivals can be yeah so maybe to start just kind of break down like what does a locations person do because it's a lot more than just getting the paperwork signed uh uh film at a location yeah so when i do location work i you know I've heard that some location managers, they kind of do the minimum. They'll show up, they'll drop their tents off and be like, here you go, PAs, you know, set it up. Um, different location managers have different ways of operating. Personally, for me, I, I enjoy being able to problem solve and be in the thick of it and, and just being able to move around and help different departments. So I try, I'm like, hey, I'm here, I might as well work. So I try to help just find things that need to be done that maybe the producer would fall to the producer, um, but they don't have time or they have too much on their plate. And it's like, hey, I can help take care of all that sort of stuff. So at the end of the day, it's what I like to tell people is, you know, you have your hair and makeup department, you have your camera department, grip department, different departments, and they're very, very specialized, very focused on electric on grip on this 
there's a lot of stuff that may fall through the cracks, questions that are like, well, it's not my department, you know, whose department is it? And those questions would come back on the producer, but locations kind of gets a lot of those, fields a lot of those, especially on set, um, anything that happens on set or related to it. So that's the way where, um, you know, you can step in and problem solve a lot of stuff like that, kind of a catch-all. So what do I actually do on set? <laughs> That's a good question. Sometimes I find out. Um, usually uh, it's a lot of stuff like setting up tables, chairs, taking out trash, uh, making sure people know where to go. Um, so when people show up to a new location that they've never been before, do people know how to get there? Do people know where to park? Do cast when they show up, do they know that they're not parking with crew, that they need to park over here in this section? Um, if you're dealing with, um, you know, restroom trailers, honey wagons, things like that, do they know where to go? Are they getting there ahead of time? Um, with, do you have power? Do your different departments, when they get there, when hair and makeup shows up, do they have tables and uh, director chairs and power available for them? Um, do they have enough stations? All that sort of stuff. You know, do you have enough tents? Are people going to pass out because they don't have shade? Uh, do they need fans? All that kind of stuff is locations. So it's uh, a, a lot of jobs that are not glamorous, but um, it is, uh, it, it can be pretty fun. So no, that I can relate to not always getting the glamorous jobs, uh, but those are usually the, the ones I find you sometimes learn the most doing and uh, can help make a lot of good connections. Yes. Yeah. It's It's been really good for me because, <clears throat> you know, I've been able to get in and because of my background and the different things I've done, I'm able to jump in and just help a lot of different departments where it doesn't necessarily, it wouldn't necessarily be a location job, but you know, it's like, Hey, I can move around and I can help different people. Uh, and, and it's fun, you know, uh, to be able to do that. So, so I guess I'd be curious to know, have you found, are there like skills that maybe you don't have to have to do locations, but say you know you have a week off in between shoots maybe this is some type of skill you can be learning and growing in yourself personally that could then come to benefit you on like a film set well i don't want to brag but i've had a lot of practice changing garbage cans and so you know <laughs> when i have a week off that's what i practice you know if i could do it fast <laughs> um that's a good question you know Doing locations, there, in my opinion, there's no job on a set that's rocket science. You know, none of this mm -hmm. stuff is like something most people can't learn, especially people who are creative or who have, you know, if they're interested in film, a lot of it's stuff you can learn, uh, especially locations. Where it's nice to have experience is where you go in, it's like, oh, hey, this broke. Oh, hey, we have an item here. Uh, hey, the power went off here. Hey, there's an issue over here. Why is this leaking? Oh, we need to fix this on set. We need to patch this drywall. Um, you know, our crew damaged this. How do we take care of that? Uh, having experience doing stuff like that is, you know, whether you've been done home repairs or, you know, worked in trades or anything like that, all that's really helpful stuff. Um, because you get a lot of weird uh, situations during locations. Um, you know, oh, somebody got stuck in an elevator. Um, how do we get them out? You know, <laughs> all, all sorts of stuff like that. So the more experience you have fixing things like that um, or just dealing with it in general, general knowledge is, it goes a long way. Okay. So... I wanted to kind of jump into like the pre-production realm of things when it comes to locations. Uh, so I guess like for me as a producer, obviously 
I see a script super early, as I like say I'm reading through it, are there things that maybe I should be thinking about as I'm looking at what locations the script calls for so that as a producer I'm thinking about them to help the locations people out down the road? Good question. It does, you know, one of the biggest things is just the number of locations you have. Um, if you have a ton of locations and you have, you know, a 60 or 70 person or more crew, um, logistically, that's going to be a big deal going to all those locations, uh, going to multiple locations in a day, um, even in a week it adds up and it costs time and money. Uh, so the less locations you have, obviously the better. Um, beyond that, a lot of the biggest things I look for is uh, just the actual locations themselves. So, you know, logistically, does this work for our crew? That would be the biggest things I would think of. Okay. Oh, so I'm, I'm just kind of curious, like, in your experience doing locations, what's been like a really unique location you've been filming in or maybe one that stands out as like, this was way more challenging than what I'm nor I normally end up dealing with? Um, there's been a few locations that have been interesting to work at. Um, hmm, good question. So, you know, sometimes I'll have a producer and they'll say, hey, Josh, we want to work at this location. This is the, uh, the building, the store, whatever that we like. Uh, would you mind going over and checking it out, telling us if, you know, what you think if it's going to work? And I'll show up and uh, I'll take notes, meet with the owner, walk around the place, and I'll come back to the producer and basically I'll say, look, you know, I see why you like the place, but logistically, this is just going to be terrible. I mean, you have 20 parking spots and we have over 40 vehicles plus big U-Hauls. It's not, it's going to be really hard. Um, I always try to caveat that with, if you want to do it, we'll make it happen. It's just going to be difficult. There was one time I remember uh, when we were in downtown Charlotte okay. and we were shooting at this one, uh, one venue and it had like no parking uh, at the location. So it was all public parking and they had some public parking down the road. And then they had this really nice parking lot across the street, um, but it was only like two or three hour parking. Uh, so we had to get U-Hauls, honey wagons, uh, probably 30 or 40 crew vehicles into this location in downtown Charlotte. And you know, you have big vehicles, it's hard for them to make turns and things like that getting in and out of these little parking lots. And uh, I asked the owners, I'm like, hey, what about that parking lot right across the street? That'd be perfect. And they said, yeah, they said, uh, they're actively towing people if you park there. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, good to know. So I talked with our crew, tried to work it out. Uh, I probably shouldn't say exactly what happened, but bottom line was we did a hybrid of using that parking lot and not using that parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say uh, that's a good way to put it. I will say it's hard to tow a large honey wagon. Um, that's as big as a semi truck. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I bet so. Uh, so in that pre-production process, like how, at what point should a locations person be brought on? Good question. So it depends. Um, usually I'll get brought on two weeks before the film actually starts shooting. Um, a lot of times those two weeks are packed full. So mm -hmm. if, if you can bring somebody on ahead of time, especially if they're handling other stuff, like maybe you don't have a transpo coordinator and you're asking your locations guy to, you know, handle, uh, coordinating different things with that, it's good to even start the conversations earlier and say, hey, this is what we're looking at. Do you want to make some phone calls before you even get here? Um, then when you come on those two weeks out, um, you know, it's, you're kind of hitting the ground running and you, you ramp up until 
that day before you start filming and it, it can be a lot of stuff to bring together, but, um, you know, a lot of times I'll come into a project and the first week of prep is mm -hmm. just me trying to take care of trying to help them because I see that they're like in over their heads, just with okay. all these details. And I start trying to take stuff off of them. Uh, even if it's like, you know, a lot of times I'll coordinate, um, honey wagons, like, okay, well, let's find a place to, you know, get all these, let's find restroom trailers. Let's, uh, take care of, we have, you know, need AT UTVs for a crew. Let's rent those. So a lot of stuff that may not quite fall to locations, but if you don't have a transpo coordinator, which you usually don't, and they're usually not there two weeks for prep. Um, I try to handle a lot of those logistical items and take a lot of those things off of them. Um, that helps them. Um, and again, it helps establish a good relationship. And then usually the second week of prep is like, I'm running, trying to get everything I need done. And it's usually the weekend. Like if I have a Saturday and a Sunday before the Monday, mm -hmm. uh, Saturday and Sunday are usually crazy because I it's like crunch time. And uh, I've really had to watch myself because it's like, if I don't, if I'm not careful, I won't show up Monday. I won't be able to. <laughs> yeah. So in, in your experience, have you been doing more like just the managing of locations or have you, you've been involved like with the scouting as well? A lot of times I will come on and a producer will have already looked at the locations because they may live there or, you know, they didn't have the budget to hire location scouts or anything like that. And so they checked it out. It's like, Hey, this is going to work. Uh, so then when I come on, a lot of times they'll pass that off to me and go, Hey, Josh, we want to shoot here. Um, take care of it, secure it, uh, you know, talk with the owners, make it work. Um, so a lot of times that's what'll happen. Okay. I have been on shoots where especially, you know, you'll get a shoot going and you'll have the locations for the first week, first two, three weeks, um, but you still have two or three more weeks of filming. And so you're trying to stay ahead of everybody and get more locations while the shoot's going on. Um, and so I'll, again, a lot of times producers know what they're looking for and they'll be like, hey, this is what we're looking for, that we want this sort of store, this sort of building. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times at that point, I don't have time to actually try to find locations. And so the producers will um, look for them and then go, hey, Josh, check this place out. Check this place out. What do you think about this? Um, and we'll kind of go from there. So a lot of times, especially on lower budget films, like under, um, you know, where they don't have a all the crew that maybe Hollywood does, um, yeah. a lot of times you're working with the producer on that sort of thing. Okay. It's, I have not had a lot of times where I will get a script and have to find all the locations myself. I, I haven't had to do that before. That would be a big deal. Uh, and again, yeah. a lot of times with the films, uh, the, the budget range I work on, the producer will be trying to do that uh, mm -hmm. way before I come on. So how big and i guess some of this kind of goes back to you know you mentioned earlier you know looking as a producer at how many locations there are in a script uh so like after maybe you figured that out how do you kind of gauge maybe how many people a lo the locations team might need like is this a film that you can get by with just one guy doing it all or do you need you know 10 people on your team just to stay sane. Right. <laughs> uh, part of that depends on your crew size um, and your actors and things like that. A lot of time, like I just came off a film project and we had two locations for the whole three weeks of, of shooting. Okay. That's very rare. Mm -hmm. But I, I told them, I said, Hey, look, I'm really the only person in locations that we need, but if you could hire an extra uh, you know, PA uh, on the AD team, a lot of times the PAs will help, uh, especially when you're on set. It's like, hey, we need to move Video Village tent. We need to move these tents. We need to move uh, Crafty. We're doing a company move to 
another part of the location. A lot of times uh, the PAs from the AD team will jump on and help locations do that and make that move. Um, beyond that, it's, it's, you know, like on that last project, it was easy for me to handle everything else. Mm -hmm. um, if you have, I, you know, I've been on projects where you're moving every day to a new location or every two or three days uh, or more than once a day, you know, sometimes you'll have two or three locations in a single day. At that point, you definitely need at least two people. Uh, so, you know, location manager plus an assistant location manager. It helps to have a third person, um, especially if you have two or three locations in one day um, and you, you know, you can't be in two places at once. So, and you have to, theoretically, you're supposed to be there before the crew gets there and until everybody's gone. So if you have two locations, you need at least two people um, trying to coordinate that and being there while the crew's there. Uh, especially if you have a large crew, you really want to be there when the crew shows up, help everybody get settled. And I really like to be there when the crew leaves um, because I can walk through with the location owner, um, you know, make sure that the crew has not messed anything up or anything like that. Take care of any issues that we need to kind of be the last person to walk out and close the door on that location. So um, you can, you know, depending on what you have, you may need more, but a lot of times you can get away with two or three people, um, you know, that makes a pretty good team. All right. Uh, so speaking of the location owners, I know I've I've heard some people talk about uh, situations they've been in where they're having to deal with not very happy uh, location owners. So what advice do you have when it comes to communicating with the location owners and dealing with stuff that comes up? This is where it's nice to work with a crew that is is good and and is not going to go in and, and just not care about a property. Um, when I meet with the location owner, and this is where it's nice to have good people skills um, because you are dealing with people all the time doing location work, not just location owners, but just your crew in general, different departments trying to work out issues and all that sort of thing. Um, I like to, when I'm talking with a location owner, especially before a crew has got there, especially if it's a homeowner and we're going to be invading their house, um, I like to be real friendly, you know, explain what's going on. I don't like to overwhelm them, but mm -hmm. I do like to make sure that they understand this is, you know, depending on the size crew, it's like, Hey, I don't want them to think we're showing up with five people and we show up with our whole army here and they're wondering what happened to their front yard. Um, you know, so you kind of have to make sure that, that you're kind of talking on the same page, but again, I try not to overwhelm them. Um, I try to be very friendly with them, be upfront with them. Um, obviously be respectful and courteous. And, you know, for me, I want them to know, Hey, regardless of what happens, we're going to make sure that your house is, uh, right when we leave. We want you guys to be as happy with this film as we are to be able to shoot here. Um, I want them to know that we're not just going to come in, you know, and then just bail and they're not going to be able to contact us again. Um, mm -hmm. So I try to make sure that there's a good relationship, uh, that there's there's trust there. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of times when we're on set, that's one of the main reasons the location owner is there i won't say the main reason but that's an important reason um as your crew is moving around and stuff you can monitor your crew and i like to also gauge the homeowners the location owners whoever that may be um a lot of times you can tell a lot just by watching them and mm -hmm. uh just picking up on different cues um if your crew is over there on the couch with their feet on the couch and uh, their dirty shoes and they're tracking mud in and your homeowner comes in and just kind of glances around. Um, you can pick up on a lot of stuff that way. And ideally you want to prevent those problems before they even come up. Um, right. And again, that's 
why it's good to work with a good crew because you eliminate people coming in and just trashing a house to begin with. Um, as far as dealing with homeowners who are not happy, um, <laughs> my keyword is de-escalate. So I want to come into a situation and I've had homeowners who are upset talking with me, uh, taking out their frustration and explaining to me um, all the intricacies of the situation from their point of view. Uh, and I like to agree with them and go, yeah, you're right. This is bad. Uh, even if it's not that big of a deal, I've had people mm -hmm. make big deals over stuff that is not that big of a deal. I don't look at them and go, you know, what are you talking about? That's not a big deal. I like to go, you know what? You're right. That was uh, something that you saw and, and we should not have done that. And I apologize, you know, let's make it right. You know, um, that doesn't mean you have to make a big deal about it to your crew. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, give them money and, and make them happy and appeal, appease them. A lot of times if someone is upset, um, they, they want to be heard and they want you, they, they want to communicate with you. Um, and so you want to communicate back and go, okay, I hear what you're saying. Uh, your concerns are valid. They've been heard. I want to address them. And a lot of times that'll take care of an issue. Um, if they're talking about money, <laughs> sometimes that will take care of an issue. Sometimes it won't. Um, again, it comes down to, you know, you want to leave on good terms. Mm -hmm. um, even if they're in the wrong, you know, at a certain point you want, you know, especially if you live in the town, you want to make sure that you're on good terms with them and, and that you did as much as you could to make things right. Um, again, even if it's not your fault, even if they've already signed the contract saying they would do it for this amount, um, you know, those can get a little more interesting as you try to work through them. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a little bit of give and take in that. For sure. Um, so you mentioned not trying to, not uh overwhelming the location owners so like are there like what are some, maybe some signs people can be watching out for that like usually if you start seeing the location owner do this or say this maybe they're starting to feel overwhelmed and you just need to back off for a little bit yeah good question um <laughs> and it can be hard you know if your crew is inside someone's house and you have a large crew um it can be hard to just ask your crew to leave because you they can't you know you have to finish so again it's it, a lot of it's communication and talking with the homeowner and um making sure that they know that you're on their side um and that uh you see things that are happening and that you're aware of them and uh and again, that's why it's good sometimes to just be on set and be present. Um, and if, uh, and again, be present if the homeowner is there. Sometimes just being present with them, and um, being aware of things can go a long way in curbing those issues before they become big issues. Um, you know, and again, if you've built that trust and that communication and that relationship with them. Uh, you know, your homeowner might be like, you know, I've had one person came up to me and said, you know, this has been a really fun experience, but it's not something we would do again. I <laughs> just, you know, they're like, you know, we like our house a certain way and, and having 60 people come in and run over your house is, uh, it can be an experience. Um, so I try to, Again, that's kind of making sure that when you go into a situation, uh, they know that you're showing up with a lot of big vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. You know, trying to ask them up front, hey, if, if, and sometimes you're not going to be able to ask and prepare the homeowner for every possibility. Um, but as you see your crew doing things, if they're walking across the lawn a lot, um, if they're driving in a place and you're like, hmm, I wonder if that's okay. Uh, sometimes just asking the homeowner and saying, hey, uh, so I'm noticing our crew is starting to do this uh, to take care of this issue. 
what do you think about that? Is that, you know, are you okay with that? Or should we, you know, go with plan B? <laughs> Sometimes you don't have a choice, but even asking and pretending you have a plan B is a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so things like that can, can help. Um, again, it's just paying attention to location owners and, um, Sometimes there's not much you can do about it once you're there and you're mm -hmm. filming, but just having that open line of communication and having that relationship and that trust goes a big way. Uh, you had, you mentioned a little bit ago, uh, sometimes money comes up uh, dealing with uh, location owners. And I mean, obviously the producers are always, uh, you know, dealing with the budget. Um, but I, I find even like a lot of beginning producers, like they only think of, of budgeting to like pay for permits for the locations, but like what other things should producers be budgeting for uh, in terms of location management? I'd say the mo the thing you're going to spend the most money on when it comes to locations is the actual location itself. Um, you're going to be probably spending way more to secure locations uh, than you are for any other part of it. Um, permits, depending on where you're filming, um, you will have to spend money on, on permits or to take care of different things. Sometimes you'll find permits are free uh, and you just have to go through the process, but the, the actual expense to secure the location is probably going to be the biggest budget item um, besides hiring your location people and besides making sure that they have the money to uh, m get what they need for their department. Like what are some of those other things that you might be having to go out and get for your department? For a location department, um, again, it depends on, you know, where you're filming, how big your crew is, um, if you're SAG, non-SAG, uh, what your actors expect, um, if it's going to be really, really hot or really, really cold. But typically you'll want some tents, pop-up tents, um, cones. I like to print core plast signs uh, to direct crew where they're going. Um, you know, I'll usually bring uh, everything from uh, tables and chairs uh, to toilet paper and paper towels, um, because wherever you go, uh, these are just basic things that, again, there's not a, another department that's really going to address these. And so your crew is going to be there and it's something that needs to be addressed and it falls to locations. Um, I like to carry a lot of things with me. <laughs> the more things you have, uh, the better, because the more problems you can answer, um, the, the, the better the film will go, uh, the smoother it'll go, and really the more you'll get called back. You know, if you can come in and, mm -hmm. and solve people's problems, that's a huge deal in, in film. So I'll bring all, all that stuff. I like to have, you know, everything from tape and rope to, uh, you know, a toilet plunger. You know, you'd be amazed how often that comes in handy. Um, and, and a lot of other stuff that I, I have personally in my kit and then that I have on my location truck. But there's nothing worse than showing up to a location, seeing a problem and not having any resources to fix it with right. um, or to take care of it with. Um, if you get there and it's like, hey, guys, our crew doesn't know where to go and you don't even have paper and a marker and tape to put up signs, then, you know, you're, it, it's hard, you know, you're trying to find that uh, from other departments or going to a store and um, it can be hard to fix the problems that come up on set. You'd be amazed at how many problems I can fix with just zip ties. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing. I, I carry them with me all the time, so. Good to know. So what may be like some of the best ways a producer can help a location's 
manager during the production phase? You know, location owners, or I'm sorry, location managers work closely with producers. A lot of different departments, they'll work with, you know, the director or the DP or different people a lot. As the location manager, I don't really, I'm working with all departments and everybody on set to a certain level, but I'm really not talking to the DP. I'm really never talking to the director. Most of my uh, work is with the producer um, and the first AD and a lot of it's communication um, and uh, trying to be aware of, of what you're going to be doing before it happens and taking care of any issues that may be going to arise uh, for those different different tasks. So a big thing working with a producer is just making sure you have good communication um, in that if, if you're saying, hey, I wanna take care of this, that you're taking care of it um, and that there's that trust relationship because the more, the, the better that relationship is, the smoother it's going to be. So if you can establish a good relationship, that's, that's key. Um, as far as what a producer can actually do, I don't know. Again, the biggest thing is just communication. Um, hopefully when you're at set, a lot of that stuff has already been taken care of uh, and your crew is already up and running. And at that point, a lot of it is just like, hey, do we know where we're going next week? Um, you know, do we have everything in place for that? And so there's not a whole lot that a producer is is just needing other than making sure different things are completed and your crew is is going to be good to go for tomorrow, for the next day, for the next week. All right. So I have just a few more kind of wrap up questions here for you. Uh, so like a lot of beginning just filmmakers in general, a locations person usually is not somebody on their list to have, you know, either just because they don't have the budget or they're not thinking about that. They're thinking about, you know, having a DP, having actors and that. So maybe what's like a piece of advice you would give to those uh, filmmakers as they're the ones having to deal with uh, the locations while also maybe being the director or the producer and that? Well, you can definitely do it all yourself, I'm sure. Um, the question is, do you want to be that overwhelmed? And uh, do you want to have that much chaos in your life? You know, a location manager really comes in and takes stuff off the producer's plate on, on low budget um, productions. If you don't have a location manager, a lot of times the producer, it, this stuff falls to the producer. Um, and so having a location manager who can handle logistics and coordinate a lot of stuff uh, takes a lot of the burden and responsibility and a lot of the you know, tedious questions off of the producer. Um, you know, as a location manager, a lot of what I do when I go out is just handling little details that come up, just making sure that, you know, when you show up to a, 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 um, a set and you have, and no one knows where to park and you have everybody parking right at the entrance and your camera truck rolls in 10 minutes after them and doesn't have anywhere to go, who coordinates trying to sort out all those cars? Um, you know, if, when they get there and people have questions about, hey, where are we going? Uh, do we have power? Can I plug into this outlet in the wall? Can I use their power? Um, you know, do we have tables and chairs? Where are we eating lunch? Where's catering going? Um, you know, a location manager will handle all that from, if you have somebody coming in uh, catering, um, he'll make sure that they get in, they'll have the, his cell number, he'll make sure they land, they know where they're going. Um, a lot of details and questions like that. So all that sort of stuff that the location manager does is less that the producer has to do. You know, if your crew is cold and they need uh, heaters, if they need shade, um, if, if there's an issue, if something goes wrong, um, 
if someone, you know, punches through the drywall in somebody's house, you know, all those sort of things are, are things that the location manager can do. And the producer can stay at the 30,000 foot level and doesn't have to get into the weeds of all these finer details. So. Right. So then, and this to some degree might even kind of tie in to, uh, to what you were just talking about, but have you noticed like either common mistakes producers seem to make when working with locations or maybe like this is just something that a lot of producers always seem to forget to think about in terms of a location? I, not really. Um, Again, communication is key, (laughs) not only with you, but also with the location owner. Um, And again, that's where it's nice to have your producer say, hey, what do you think about this as a location? What do you think about about this? What do you think about this? Because um, they're not always thinking about things like, you know, hey, where are we going to get power? Do we have, you know, water? Do we have these different things? Uh, Do we have enough parking? And a location manager can can go in and say, hey, I think we're forgetting about this. You know, hey, we don't have any restrooms here. Um, you know, on usually the amount of trash alone that you carry away from a set is huge. Um, and depending on the size of the dumpster, you can go through multiple dumpsters a week. So just even things about that, who takes the trash away from set? Uh, do we have a dumpster on set? All those sort of things are are, are things that the location manager can can take care of or um, address if the producer is is thinking about other things and just trying to you know find a location because we're shooting the next day so nothing specifically that I've seen happen repeatedly with producers you know making mistakes in regards to locations but um, again a lot of things can just be worked out if you have good communication so my final question is, um, and this maybe wouldn't even have to be specific to locations, but I'm just always curious as a producer to hear what the, I guess, you know, I guess you'd call them the below the line crew, you know, what their experience is, you know, what advice they would give to a producer about just running their sets in the future in general and so that they're smoothly run and all that so i don't know if there's anything you you've encountered that yeah i would i would advise producers to consider this for their future productions my advice in general to people is um you know don't get stressed out and uh and don't don't worry about just try to stay calm if you can. <laughs> you know, having a good attitude is is huge. Um, and again, good communication, uh, trusting the people around you. If 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 you trust them enough to make them as a department head, then um, you know, don't micromanage. Um, and so it's really cool when producers there's that trust level where they can just say, "Hey, <clears throat> run with it," and uh, that just makes everything go go really smooth when people are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing but the a big advice i give everybody and especially the people who i work with is a lot of times on a film set it'll seem like you know three big things will come right at you directly and that need to get taken care of like 10 minutes ago and it's like you are holding up production everything is like what were you thinking this you know needs to be addressed now And sometimes it's things that you don't have control over. And so I tell people, look, do what you can, but give it 10 minutes. And a lot of times in 10 minutes, most if not all the issues have worked themselves out. Um, And uh, so, you know, if, if don't get stressed because if you get stressed easily, everything on a film set is going to stress you out. And at the end of the day, it's not going to be fun and it's not going to be worth it. So, um, yeah. I've definitely had times where I've been too stressed on a film set. uh, And yeah, I did not, 
you know, either I wasn't sleeping well then, or I was not enjoying myself on set and just wanted the shoot to get over with. Uh, well, and that's the other thing I try to tell people is you have to take care of yourself um, because at a certain time, your body will just be like, okay, that's enough. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, just just try to keep that in mind and uh, enjoy yourself. <laughs> try to get sleep. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of the podcast. Uh, so thank you very much, Josh, for taking the time to come on today. Hey, Micah, appreciate you having me on. I enjoyed it. Until next time, make sure to subscribe to The Producer Podcast, and thanks for listening.